In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to target your tracks with only the video and audio sources that you want from the viewer. As you are editing, you'll find that you'll need to put video and audio along with text and graphics on different tracks so that you don't overwrite other media. Using the targets allows you to disregard sources that you don't want in the viewer to be laid down in the timeline. To give you an example of this, let's open up our media folder and double click one of our clips. It loads up into the viewer and as you can see, it contains one video track and two audio tracks. So whatever is loaded in the viewer corresponds directly to which targets will show up in your sequence. So to show you how the targets change, I'm going to open up the music folder and double click one of the music files which contain two tracks of audio. You'll notice in the timeline with the targets that there are only two targets, A1 and A2. You don't get a V1 video target because the music that's loaded in the viewer doesn't contain a video track. And now I'm going to go ahead and open up a picture file. I'm going to double click it and let it load in the viewer and you'll notice that you have no audio targets but just the V1 target for video. That's because the viewer now contains only a video track with no audio tracks. So I'm going to close out the picture folder now and reopen the media folder and I'm going to find a clip to double click on. I load it into the viewer and once again you can see that you now have one video target and two audio targets because that's what the viewer contains. I'm going to go ahead and pick an endpoint on this clip and then I'm going to choose an in and out point on the timeline by moving my playhead to the point I want the clip to start and marking an in on the canvas side and putting my playhead in the timeline where I want it to go out and marking an out on the canvas side. Now I want to use this as a b-roll shot above one of my video clips. So if I want to put it above one of my video clips, the first thing I'll have to do is make a new track. And also I don't want to use audio from this b-roll shot, I just want to use the video picture. So I'm going to go to the top menu and click on Sequence and then go down and click on Insert Tracks. The Insert Track window pops up and I'm going to add one video track. And as you can see, a V2 appears in your timeline. Now because I don't want audio on this shot, I'm going to go ahead and click the A1 and A2 targets so that they separate. Notice the gap between the targets when you click them. Now I also want the video to go to V2 instead of V1. So I'm going to go ahead and move the V1 target up to the V2 track in the sequence. Now I'm going to go ahead and click the red overwrite button in the canvas. And as you can see, it lays the video track on V2 in the timeline without the audio. So when your playhead in the timeline goes across the V2 track, you won't see the V1 video track. Because in Final Cut Pro, the top layer is the dominant layer. So whatever's on the topmost track is the thing you're going to see before seeing below to the other tracks. The reason why we do this is because it's easier to manipulate and drag around where you want it without overriding other media. Now I'm going to do the same thing with an image file. I'm going to mark an in on my timeline by moving the playhead to where I want to start and marking the mark in button in the canvas and moving my playhead where I want it to stop and marking the out button on the canvas. Then I'm going to open up my PIX file and I'm going to double click on an image file. So as I do this, you'll notice when it loads into the viewer that I only have one V1 video target because this picture contains no audio. Now just to show you a little more how the targets work, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the V1 video target for this picture that's loaded in the viewer by clicking it and you can see that a gap appears between the target and the track in the sequence. And now when I hit the red overwrite button, here an error message appears. It says, edit operation had no effects, check the target tracks. You may need to open the source clip into the viewer in order to see all of the target tracks. Now all this means is that when I disconnected the V1 video target going to the track 2 in the sequence and I hit the red overwrite button, Nothing could go in because all the targets were disconnected. So now I will reconnect the V1 target to the track 2 of the sequence by clicking it with my mouse. And then click the red overwrite button in the canvas just as before. 
And you can see the picture lands on the second video track where the target was connected between the marks I had put in the timeline. Now I'm going to go ahead and open my music folder and double click a piece of music. The music tracks load into the viewer and you can see now that I have only two audio targets, A1 and A2, which correspond directly to the two audio tracks loaded in the viewer. I'm going to go ahead and mark the in and out on my timeline of where I want this music to go. So I'm going to move my playhead to the beginning of the timeline and mark an in on the canvas side. And I'm going to move my playhead to the end of the timeline and go one frame back so that I don't add a frame and mark an out on the canvas side. Then I'm going to move my audio targets down, A2 to A4 and A1 to A3, and also connect them by clicking them and you will see that the gap will disappear between the targets. Then I go ahead and hit my red overwrite button and as you can see it lays the music track on tracks three and four of the timeline exactly where I targeted the tracks and between the in and out marks that I had made in the sequence earlier.